So welcome to chapter 2 of our study. Let's go look at the instructions of businesses and also types of accounting. So first of all, when we talk about businesses in this particular paper, we are specifically referring to those businesses which are profit-making businesses. And of course, suppose that you uh, want to start your business, so for example, open up a shop to sell clothes. So perhaps you can think about, okay, I'll start up my business as a sole trader. Because by doing so, uh, we don't have to go through a lot of these complicated procedures by registering our business in the company's house and so on. And um, all we need to know, of course, by setting up the sole trader business, so for example, here's the sole trader business, and you own that business, and you run the business on, uh, I mean, on your own. And of course, you can employ different employees to work for you, and that will be absolutely fine. But for example, if you open up, uh, so for example, you open up the shop or open up the restaurant, setting up business as a sole trader, you own that business, and that means you are the business because you're the sole trader. And that means if you borrow, so for example, $1 million from the third party, let's say the bank, or let's say your friend. And um, you write up a promissory note to pay back that $1 million to that third party at some point in the future. But subsequently, because you can't sell your clothes, because your clothes are out of date, uh, not fashionable to some extent, and um, you decide to close down that business, but you still owe that $1 million to the third party. So in this particular case, if you set to a business as a sole trader, you still have to pay back that $1 million to the third party. You are liable to that $1 million to the third party. And of course, you may have a question, well, Steve, I don't want to pay uh, that $1 million to the third party, and what else I can do? Of course, all you can do is to set up, for example, the limited liability companies. So, the limited liability company can either be unlisted company, which means your company is relatively small, and um, you haven't listed your company on the stock exchange to some extent. Of course, some of the uh, businesses, even though they're large, they don't list their company on the stock exchange, so don't get me wrong. So um, the, uh, the li limited liability company will simply say, okay, if you set up a business as the limited liability company and you owe $1 million to the third party, of course, if that $1 million that you owe to the third party is because that you cannot pay this money back to the third party, and when you're registering your business as a limited liability company, you're required to uh, register the amount of liability that you will be liable if your business is wound up and you have to pay back that amount of money to the employees, to the customers, and uh, to your suppliers and so on. So, except for circumstances where you set up a business that you owe $1 million to a third party, for example, you owe one million dollars to the tax authority, and because of the tax evasion, because you're manipulating your account to save your tax bill, and if that's the case, you're still um, liable to that one million dollars as the liability in that circumstance, because tax evasion is illegal, and that means in most circumstances, if something that's legal and you set up a business as a limited liability company and you owe money to a third party company and your maximum liability uh, according to your um, uh, within your company according to your uh, company's document is let's say it's just to be 0.5 million and that means the maximum amount of money that you're going to pay for is just to be 0.5 and uh, you're going to wound up your business, and which means you're going to, um, I mean, uh, liquidate your business. Okay, so uh, instead of paying for one million, and now you're going to pay for 0.5 million dollars only. Of course, as I said, the limited liability company can neither be 
unlisted company. I'm sure they've heard about terms before, which means they you, you, you cannot buy their shares directly, for example, in the London Stock Exchange and New York Stock Exchange. Or it can be populistic company, which means you can buy those shares of that particular company uh, in the open market freely. And of course, most likely, uh, maybe that you're a professional and you uh, want to start a business as the uh, uh, for example, you're working as a lawyer and uh, you want to open up the, the firm to provide the legal service. So probably partnership is more appropriate for that types of business. Or for example, if you uh, want to start up the accountancy practice firms with your friend, but also, for example, the ACCA qualified or SIMA qualified accountant and so on. Yes, you can partner with your friends to open up that, uh, for example, the um, legal practice firms and so on. So, if you start a business as a partnership business, so that means, okay, you and your friends jointly own that business, which is the partnership. Of course, you can employ lots of employees to work for you and uh, if you borrow some money from others for example let's say one million dollars you and your friends will be liable to that one million dollars and that's all we need to know so for example if you are finding it difficult to uh, pay for that one million dollars you wind up that business that's absolutely fine but you're still liable to that one million dollars for example for each of them will be liable for 0.5 million dollars So, of course, if you find it difficult to pay for that money, yes, you can apply for the personal bankruptcy to uh, weigh off that liability, but it's, it's, it's entirely up to you. So, we need to know that there will be three types of businesses. And, of course, if you look at the accountancy firms nowadays, most of them will be in the form of partnership business type. So, I mean, to be, I mean, to be accurate, that's called the LLP or limited liability partnership because if you open up uh, the firm to provide for example the audit services to uh, the large clients nowadays in the marketplace that's quite risky and so as you can see a lot of these audit firms collapsed recently uh, so for example a few years ago a very very big audit firm or the largest audit firm uh, in the world have collapsed uh, because of an Enron issue and that's called Anderson yes and uh, that audit firm is Anderson so um, li limited liability partnership so that means if you owe for example you set a business type as a limited liability partnership and you owe one million dollars to your clients uh, for example your client is suing you and your maximum liability according to limited, li limited liability partnership is just to be 0.5 and as a result of it that's the maximum amount of money that you're going to pay for and that's all you need to know okay so as you can say yes those were the three types of businesses that we can learn as you can see in your notes and of course just a helpful tip is all those businesses needs to prepare for the financial statement uh, and that's the, the reason why we're going to look at it so for example we'll be spending time to look at the financial statements for the sole trader as well as the limited liability part, uh, limited liability company but partnerships financial statements are not required by uh, in your syllabus and that's the reason why we'll be focusing on the uh, uh, finance statements for the sole trader and limited liability company. So we need to prepare for the finance statements for tax purposes because we need to pay tax if you make profit to, I mean we need to pay tax to the tax authority if you make profit. The reason why this will be a case is because that you've earned some money from uh, people in the society and that's the reason why you've got that responsibility to pay for the tax expenses to the government and government 
uh, would take this money to help with those people, or poor people in the society, and that's the reason why we need to do that. So, just to recap, there'll be different types of businesses. For example, we've got sole trader, and one person owns the business, and at the same time, will be liable to any debts that are incurred. Of course, it's legally it's the same as the entity, so that means that person is the business, and that's the same. We can't separate this together, but from the accounting's point of view later on, we'll be introducing a concept called business entity, because we're recording a transaction related to that entity, which is the sole trader business rather than the person. And for accounting purposes, we're going to separate them out in a second, but uh, in effect, or in essence, uh, the person and the business will be the same thing. And we need to prepare for the financial statement, we need to maintain the financial record for tax purposes, but we don't have to publish our financial statements publicly, because we don't have to tell others how much profit that we've made, because we don't sell our shares publicly. And that's the reason why, as you can see, the account is also called uh, financial statement, and that will be the same thing including the balance sheet, the statement of profit and loss, and cash flows and change in equity and that kind of stuff. I'll talk about that in a second. But so you can see, by setting up the business as a sole trader, if you were to lend the money from others, or if you want to have, so for example, one billion dollars of cash, that may not be quite easy. And that's the reason why you need to set up, for example, a limited liability company to list, our base, uh, to list our company onto stock exchange so it can sell our shares and get the cash and for future investment. The second type is partnership, which means two or more persons own the business, as you can see in the definition, and they will be liable to the, any debts that are incurred. And same as what we've seen in the sole trader, we need to prepare for the financial statement, and also we introduce the concept called limited liability partnership as well. The limited liability company will be relatively uh, different from the sole trade and business is simply because for a limited liability company, I said for that company here, if it is a limited liability company, we can call it the LTD, limited liability company, we've got the maximum liability that we uh, need to be responsible for. For example, you've borrowed one million dollars from others, but you but your maximum liability is just to be 0.3 million. So if you find it difficult, if it is legal, if you find it difficult to pay for others uh, for one million, you can pay for a maximum of 0.3. You're gonna cancel that company, which means we're gonna wind that company up, and that's all we need to know. So which means the person will be separated from the business. For example, uh, if I wind that company up, I will not be responsible for the remaining of $0.7 million of debt to the third party. So that's all you need to know, because the company is a legal entity separated from a person who puts his capital in the business. And of course, as you can say, we are registering a company that will be more complicated than associated as well as the partnership. Is to register at the company's house. You need to, com uh, you need to com complete this, uh, the association and articles um, of a company. So, for example, the um, article of association uh, would just to be the contract among those shareholders. So, for example, if you set up a business, for example, a limited liability company, so perhaps six shareholders will put his money into the company as the initial capital put into the business. That's absolutely fine. And um, we've got a contract among those six shareholders, I can call it the sh uh, stockholders, I can call it uh, as the owners of the business. And that contract is called Articles of Association. So Articles of Association details, for example, when do we have annual general meeting and the rights of each shareholder and so on and so forth. So, you need to prepare for the financial account submission to company's house. 
uh, in the UK and also having your uh, financial statements being checked by the audit firm only for larger companies especially for the populist companies and you also need to distribute your financial statements to all of the shareholders to tell them how much profit that you've earned and how much cash they're going to distribute to them as well. So that will be more complicated and lots of procedures in place if you want to set up a limited liability company. So just to recap what we've done is we know there will be three types of businesses including sole trader, limited liability company as well as the partnership. So for accounting purposes only, we will need to, we will need to uh, introduce a concept called business entity. Because for example, if you want to account for the transactions that have already taken place for a sole trader, there's no point that you simply say that person has incurred or uh, the transactions have taken place within that person. It's not that person that incurring those transactions, but it is that business entity Either it will be a sole trader or a limited liability company uh, where the transaction has taken place. And that means when we are recording a transaction later on, we will see that, for example, for sole trader, we can call it the gym as the sole trader. So we're supposing it is to be a business entity. But remember that business entity for sole trader, gym and the sole trader uh, will be the same because G will be liable for any extra debt. Of course, for a limited liability company, G will be separated from the company. So, when we are talking about accounting, just a uh, useful tip, that's what we've seen before. When we're talking about accounting. There will be two types of accounting in the real life nowadays. So, first of all, we have management accounting that you've studied in other papers. So what do I mean by, by management accounting then? So for example if I were to uh, decide to go into the, I don't know, the uh, mobile phone industry, I would like to develop a brand new mobile phone. So that would be a step one that would need to decide which industry I should be in for example, I want to produce the mobile phone. And then I'll be deciding what will be a cost for that mobile phone and also what will be the price I'm going to charge for each mobile phone. For example, for each mobile phone, I suppose it costs me, I don't know, $100. I want to sell $2,000. So I will make the budgeted profit, which means I forecast for each mobile phone that I'm going to sell. I can make $1,900 worth of profit. So that's called management accounting, because management accounting is where we're going to set up the costs. Um, I mean, making our decisions, for example, the pricing decision, and also controlling the business, for example, deciding how much profit that you, uh, you want to make, and you've actually made, and we're going to compare the gap between these two. And that's called the management accounting. So, management accounting, as you can see, is looking at the future, as you can see, yeah? It's simply because you're going to decide what to do in the future, for example, to go into the phone industry. The second type of accounting is called, man uh, is called financial accounting. And this is where, uh, this is what we are studying currently. So financial accounting simply means, okay, you decide to enter into the, uh, the mobile phone industry and um, you've sold 10 mobile phones and that means your price or the total sales revenue that you've got is to be $20,000 because you sell each is to be 2000 and you sell 10 of those. For cost, it's another 10 would be $1,000. So the total profit that you've actually made is to be $19,000. And that means for the financial accounting, all we can do is we're going to record, which means we're going to put the $20,000 as the sales revenue into the statement of profit or loss. We're going to put the costs of $1,000 again in the profit or loss. And um, 
they're going to record $19,000 worth of profit in a statement of profit and loss as well. And at the same time, in order to produce each of his mobile phone, you need to buy the raw materials. And hence, you're going to record the raw materials in your warehouse, in your statement of finance position. I'm going to detail that in a second. So, which means financial accounting is looking at the history, which means what we have already done is simply record them into statement, into a set of account, including, for example, how much profit that you've made into the PL or profit or loss, if you like, into the balance sheet. I can call it as the statement of financial position for those assets and liabilities that you've had and so on and so forth. I'm going to explain to you about that in a second. So, looking back to your note, as you can say, we've got different types of account. First of all, we've got the management account. So, management accounts, as you can say, because as I said, think about the mobile phone industry example that I gave you before. That management account is uh, related to, for example, the price that we're going to set and how we're going to determine that price. Of course, different company would follow different policy. And how we're going to forecast how much profit are we going to make. For example, forecasting the cost and so on. And as you can see, different companies would use different techniques to uh, deciding the pricing decision, determining the cost for the product and make any forecasts. And as you can see, the management account, uh, management account will be for internal use and there will be no standardised way that we can prepare for that because different companies will be different. But for the financial accounts, on the other hand, as you can see, they are used uh, by external investors only, or normally, but in, it usually used by the external investors. And sometimes it will be used by the internal employees to decide the company's performance and whether or not I should stay within that company for the next year. Because suppose that your company is a loss-making company, for example, losing $1 billion each and every year. Are you willing to stay in that company for the next 10 years? Well, probably not. So that's the reason why I mean financial accountants, uh, financial accounts uh, would normally be used by the external shareholders, which may separate it from the business, uh, for investment purposes to decide whether or not I should buy or sell the share. So that's financial accounts. Of course, financial accounts in order for the investor to compare different companies' policy um, and their performance for populist companies, they will be following the IFRS, the International uh, Financial Reporting Standards, when they're paying for the account. So the account will be used by the investors, which means the shareholders, uh, to decide whether or not I can buy your company's shares. Lenders, such as the banks, employees, as I said before, Government decides the tax payments they have to pay for and also public to decide whether or not your company's reputation is good or bad and so on, whether or not you're exploiting labour. I mean, particularly if you uh, got a factory in, for example, China, Indonesia and India, so we're going to see your final statements, especially for staff costs, as well as your disclosure to see whether or not uh, you're cheating them very, uh, really well. So, just a reminder what we've done in this particular chapter. So, first of all, we've talked about different businesses. Um, hope you can remember that. We've got three types of businesses. Sole trader partnerships was the limited liability company. And secondly, that we've talked about different accounts, including management accounts as well as the financial account. I'm going to stop here because that's the end of the chapter 2 and hope you're absolutely happy with that. So, study hard again and look forward to seeing you in the chapter 3 of our study. APC, accounting for your future.